talk. Uh, the next talk is called Divog Forever. As you have to know, RC3 is not the first event which happened online in the chaos orbit. As the pandemic has led to, a, to the cancellation of various chaos events, a series of online gatherings has been happening during whole 2020. Divog is also known as digitally distributed online chaos and is quite fundamentally different from yet another conference moved online by necessi necessity. So in this talk, you will get a behind the scene review highlighting a variety of perspectives. Now we welcome our speakers who speak as representatives for the DVOG organizer organization. Um, welcome STB, Benjamin Wand, Brutte, and DJ Spock. And I have a warm virtual applause for you. The stream is yours. Thank you very much, Sandra. Hello. Uh, we are DJ Spock, Benjamin, STB, and Brutel, that's me. And we are going to tell you the story of DVOG. The story starts when COVID started happening for many of us in early 2020. And then Easter hack didn't happen. And then later on, the GPN didn't happen. And MRMCD didn't happen. So instead, when COVID started to happen, DVOG started to emerge. That's digitally distributed online chaos. And as I just said, it all started from Easter hack. Easter hack 2020 had been well ahead in its planning when it became clear that it wouldn't be happening after all. But there was all this energy that had gone into preparations and there were talks submitted and accepted and there was a team ready to go. So go they did. Uh, with less than, less than four weeks of preparation, um, and they invented DVOC. That's not a substitute, but as it turned out, something entirely new. Um, and it included many firsts. Uh, it included many self-organized sessions, uh, which after the event officially had ended, seemed to just continue forever, hence DVOC forever. Um, the event had proper chaos feeling with um, your very own deck. Um, and overall, it had the excitement of uh, something new. Um, and then moving on to May, um, DVOC happened again, that was the party edition this time, with a music stream, more self-organized sessions, and a notable first this time, the Quiet Cube that came to DVOC for the first time. For September 2020, um, next slide please. We moved from the home launch to push to talk with another set of many firsts. Uh, for the first time, um, when Easter Hack still was drawing on the CFP, um, well, when, when, when Hidden Service was still drawing on the CFP for Easter Hack, now we had a DVOC with its own uh, call for uh, participation. Um, and uh, RC3 was starting to be on the horizon, so a number of teams um, were starting to have test runs. For example, the Kidspace, the awareness team, we had a Heaven, we had Angels. So as a consequence of that, the organization team was larger than at previous DVOX. The communication needs changed. We needed active onboarding. And um, so, First, uh, to get into the details here, Benjamin is going to be telling you about um, the organization and then we move on to technical solutions with uh, STB. Benjamin, please. Hello. Um, the management aspects that I'll describe now mostly represent push to talk because that was the DVOC with most team and somewhat the most professional event and actually required something like management. We use pads for almost everything to do with planning. 
even the slides of this talk run on Code EMD. Um, obviously, we had a wiki, but we didn't use that much for the planning, except for some things to do with speaker communication and t-shirt sizes. Um, there was a metapad, and you see example of that on the right side of the slides now. Um, the metapad is the central hub. Everything, like every medium relevant to it, was listed there. Um, except for the date of the next Bumble, um, which was announced in the rocket chat because of my obsession with single source of truth. Um, one might use a wiki, but ultimately pets are more collaborative and that made the onboarding of new members easier with the simple permission structure, um, which helped, I think, which I think helped to make people feel invited um, Using pad means lower entrance barrier. Um, next slide, please. Ah. Here, roughly, you see the pads of the work push to talk. Um, the metapad lists all the pads and all the pads linked to the metapad. Um, most of the time, we had mumbles once a week, and in the last two weeks, more often. Um, the mumble pads existed early, and more about that later. Um, the next thing we had in the meta pad was a person's list. He used an imaginary one. At Devot Push to Talk, we had 21 people. Um, when someone joined Devo a Devot meeting for the first time, we asked them, what do you want to do? And uh, wrote it into the person's list, regardless how insignificant. I think it's very important to ask, what do you want to do, and not, what are you good at? This comes with an optimistic conception of Hacker, where when someone is interested in something, they can learn it. It invites to explore, and exploration makes happy. Also, we never had to babysit anybody's motivation, because they were already doing what made them happy. And maybe that sounds trivial and as if you are already doing it. But um, you might ask yourself, when are the occasions where you ask, uh, what should we do? And you could observe, observe the burden that develops compared to things where you started from, what do I want to do? I feel a bit obliged to add that this type of communication built on voluntariness and intrinsic motivation it was not always perfect from the beginning. We actually had two teams that are more used to be approached like, we need you, appear. And in those cases, the communication was a bit slow at first. However, I'm convinced that working based on interesting motivation is a must have in volunteer driven events. And um, I will try to continue using that that way if we continue DVOC. Um, if it grows to more than 30 people, though, I would also make a team list. This was a bit like, we, we might have already done a team list at push to talk And then the Metapad was home to random things and drafts. For instance, an early stage of Call for Angel was lingering around as a draft uh, for a couple of weeks in the Metapad. This is once again an invitation to work together. I'd argue that it is better writing on one pad, then merging things later. Nobody likes merging. And then we had the mumble pads. This is, um, um, the mumble pads existed early, like they existed as soon as the mumble was announced. And here you see an imaginary pad before the meeting starts. We already had the meeting date, date of mumble, link to metapad and list of mumble attendees. And before we would collect topics, um, who wanted to discuss something were invited to write it into the agenda. This is good for two things. On First of all, it supports single tasking, which makes happy and productive. And the other thing does, is that when in the beginning of the meeting, there's already agreement what is going to be discussed, the meeting is much smoother. In fact, we didn't need official moderators in some sense, the pets were the moderators. Um, as soon as the need for a pad came to awareness, the pad was created and linked to a meta pad. This was also true for feedback pads. 
Um, and doing this, in my opinion, is important to keep everybody's mental load at a bearable level by promoting single tasking, especially at stressful times. The idea for the Q&A pad came up um, at Hidden Service, where we tried to get a low-tech way of audience participation. The Signal Angel cared for the visual order in the pad, and the Herald read the questions directly from the pad. And in a very rare case of bad behavior on the pad, the single age, an, Signal Angel would change um, the writing permission on the pad to team only and add questions from uh, Matrix and Twitter. Um, and this was somehow, there, there was uh, chaos organizing itself uh, magically um, on the Q&A pads. People wrote um, answers themselves and people wrote down the answers from the speaker. So this was something that we were surprised of. Um, yes, and now to STB for the technical details. You are muted, STB. You have to unmute. Well, somebody m muted me, but apparently I have to unmute myself. So now you should be able to hear me and see me. So before I get into the technical details, let me just add one thing that was um, a rather major point for me that, uh, like, which which made it absolutely enjoyable to be part of uh, the organizational team, and that was that we we very quickly gathered people who thought, oh, maybe I can contribute something. And they appeared for the first time in one of the mumbles and said, uh, would you mind if I did this or that? And we said, by all means, go ahead. That's a fantastic idea. Just do it. And that, that was absolutely fantastic. It created a, a, a very nice atmosphere working together. And I think um, many of the things that work really well uh, got to us not by some central person saying, hey, let's do this. Somebody has to do this. We need to find somebody who can do this or that for us. But really people popping up and saying, is anybody doing X yet? And the answer usually was, no, nobody is doing that yet, but it's a fantastic idea. Do you want to do it? And they did. So that was really, that, that made it super cool to be part of them. All right. Into the technical details. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the live video production and how we did that, um, how the workshops and self-organized sessions work on the technical level, um, a little bit how we uh, managed uh, some communication and community interaction, and finally, some thoughts about free software and open source. OK, so the live video production. Um, the VOC uh, somehow was preparing uh, OBS Studio um, as a remote-controlled video switching and direction thing, and they were playing around with that. And uh, when uh, Easter Egg had to be canceled, uh, somebody from the VOC said, uh, do you want to do a virtual event? And some of us said, yeah, why not? Like, we have all this content, and if you know how to do, like, a remote thing, uh, we'll be happy to work on that. And that's how that got started. And at that time, um, OBS was the only thing we really had available. So we had a central OBS um, that uh, put together the speakers and the heralds and everybody else who would appear on camera. And uh, the speakers and heralds were using OBS on their own machines to produce their image and mix in the slides and all that. Um, for some things, we used uh, Jitsi or BBB, especially if we have multiple speakers. Um, and that simply worked through kind of filming the browser window, uh, like we're doing right now the second. Um, when uh, people are using OBS to produce their own video signal, there's a lot of latency involved. So typically, the minimum latency that you can achieve with OBS is about five seconds. And of course, if you have an interaction between a herald uh, or two speakers, um, five seconds is way too long. That creates very awkward pauses. Or if the latency is different between the different speakers, then uh, people start talking over each other, and that doesn't work at all. So we thought, OK, we, we have a tool that enables low latency audio. 
uh, interaction and that is mumble so all of the participants were together in a mumble um, and were talking through mumble with each other and then the video and the audio for the stream was picked up by obs and we synchronized the obs's so they would all have the same uh, amount of latency roughly at least by basically adjusting the streaming parameters uh, that the obs is using and uh, that worked uh, relatively well not perfect but it definitely worked um so uh, of course we had the power of the VOC behind this event or these events uh, so the VOC was providing uh, the uh, uh, cdn um, and uh, the transcoding for that and uh, so that worked really well we also wanted to have live translation in there and that is something that this year we couldn't do in the dbox that simply that it, I, it, be, until last year i thought that computer audio was a solved problem and i learned this year it's not it's horrible basically irrespective of which operating system you use um, and it's super hard to uh, pick up and mix together audio sources in just the right way to embed them into a final video streams with multiple audio tracks that's that's a really hard problem that we don't have a good solution for but uh uh, except for with professional equipment, but not in, on basically home computers with open source software. But work is ongoing on that. Um, but we could uh, make the interpreters heard through Mumble directly. So we communicated simply the Mumble server that the interpreters uh, were speaking into while listening to the live stream, and people could pick up uh, the interpreted audio from there. Um, and the fact that we couldn't get the translated audio directly into the stream is also the reason most of the talks from the Devox are not online yet on media CCCDE because somebody still needs to sit down and uh, do the final audio mixing. And uh, I'm hoping to help do that in the next couple of weeks. And uh, yet another use of pads and CodyMD. Uh, CodyMD includes a feature where uh, you can write markdown slides and uh, through reveal.js, a JavaScript library, you can produce slides. The, the slides you're looking at right now are produced exactly this way. And you can enable autoplay. And so that was our InfoBeamer. So again, we just filmed a browser window um, in which this pad was running. And uh, that was how we got uh, the typical InfoBeamer style uh, slides onto the stream. And uh, again, uh, questions and feedbacks via the pads, but uh, uh, Benjamin already mentioned that. Um, one thing that is more organizational than necessarily technical is you need to spend a lot of time preparing the speakers. Um, of course, at the end of this year, this is mu has become much easier, but at the beginning of the year, virtually nobody had any idea how to produce good video and audio from home. Uh, very few people had done that before. Maybe some gamers did because they're on Twitch all the time. I have no idea. But most people had no idea how bad they really sounded or looked on video because of the lighting. Not necessarily even because of the technological limitations of their systems, but really because the lighting was bad and they were trying to use the microphone that was built into their uh, laptop. So getting headsets to everybody or, or in similar setups was really Really important and of course we had to rehearse all this like how does this work like who is going to say what when um, when is the speaker going to start speaking and when does the herald come in and all that so depending on the like computer savviness of uh, the speakers um, that could take any where from 30 minutes to two hours and we had a couple of complicated setups where we even spent more than two hours in multiple sessions um, to get people prepared and for the most part that worked well but we had especially at uh, push to talk we had one uh, thing as our opening on a friday night uh, where multiple people from all around the world were trying to join a big blue button and we had no time to rehearse that before so the technical quality unfortunately was not so great uh, which is unfortunate because it was a very interesting topic and maybe we find time to do something like that again with better quality. 
Um, if you want to do something like this yourself, you don't need too many people, but the recommendation would be you need somebody doing the actual video, live video editing, a video director. Um, you need somebody who is the sole person to contact, the single point of contact. Uh, so if there's a question, where's the speaker or the speaker wants to know which, which Jitsi to join or uh, what other URL to open, um, you need this one person that can answer all these questions, maybe not answer them themselves, but knows how to, who to talk to to get good answers. Um, it's really useful to have a herald who can moderate uh, things and is available if something uh, goes wrong technically. So you don't have to uh, broadcast like a uh, like a thing like we're we're going to be back right right real soon now or something. So somebody who can come on screen and quickly explain what's happening right now. And um, of course, when you're using pads to directly uh, let the audience. Uh, participate in asking questions, um, at least for some topics, it's absolutely necessary to have somebody who is monitoring these pads and uh, like make sure no vandalism happens or, or something worse. So that's really useful to have that. And some of our heralds really enjoyed having signal angels who sorted and prepared the questions for them. So sorted them by topic or indicated which questions were asked multiple times or something like that and helped structure the pad basically. So the heralds can simply pick out the questions uh, one by one without having to read through a long conversation on IRC themselves, for example. Okay, on to workshops and the self-organized sessions. As Benjamin mentioned, we basically provided a wiki page uh, where everybody could add their session, and people did. Um, so we, we had to do very little to entice people to start doing that, and they, they even started improving the pad, uh, sorry, the wiki page themselves and organize it because very quickly we had a lot of entries in these tables. And um, they, of, of course, uh, uh, we could not provide uh, the infrastructure to host a session uh, ourselves, but uh, already at the time, uh, we had a lot of open instances of Jitsi, Big Blue Button, uh, run by reputable organizations or individuals. So we simply provided a little list of free servers that people could use, and people picked them and then simply put the link into the wiki page for their event. So they started using that quite extensively. And we did not have to do much except to make sure that the wiki page uh, was not uh, badly formatted or something like that. So, so a couple of times we had to fix a couple of obvious mistakes, but uh, we didn't need to edit this. And although this page was open to edit to anyone, um, we had no vandalism, knock on wood. Um, and so, uh, as Benjamin said, uh, to our big surprise, um, the sessions didn't end when the first event ended. And uh, we, we now and then there's more sessions that are announced that way. Um, so apart from the, uh, from the uh, self-organized sessions, uh, we also provided basically the wiki as a central point for people to find information and find community resources, uh, like which uh, like uh, uh, which which uh, pads to use for uh, the questions uh, uh, for the talks, or uh, where to chat in, in Matrix or IRC or Discord or Mastodon or Twitter, like which accounts to follow. Um, and uh, again, that was a community effort. Uh, we did not run our own matrix server or create anything there, um, especially not Discord, but people did. And they said, hey, I set this up. Uh, can you link to it? And we said, gladly, uh, fantastic. And there were people who were monitoring those channels and communicating back and forth and answering questions. Uh, so again, the community stepped up and did things and it became a really great event without much central coordination. So that was, again, a very nice thing to happen. And finally, um, except for the in, in injection of the, the translated audio, 
uh, into the stream for the translators, um, everything worked decently well. So there's a couple of tools that, although they're open source, uh, are really top notch. Of course, there's small problems everywhere, um, but you can do this without any proprietary, proprietary tools. So um, in this year, we have heard from people, oh no, you have to use Zoom, everything else sucks. And that's simply not true. Big Blue Button and Jitsi as video conferencing systems work, they work very decently. Uh, could they work better? Of course. Are they lacking features? Of course. Um, but uh, having had to work with some commercial alternatives uh, in my day-to-day -day job, I can tell you uh, the, the commercial tools are not necessarily any better. Uh, they just suck in different ways. Um, so I'm very happy to be able to do this with free software and open source. And uh, there's no reason to think that, that you couldn't do it. And uh, one more thing. Um, it was very interesting which people came together. So we started using Big Blue Button, and the Big Blue Button people, the developers, became aware of it and uh, contacted us and said, "Hey, we're doing this uh, kind of hackathon," um, and invited a bunch of people uh, to help improve the feature set of Big Blue Button. And so, a couple of features that have been introduced in the past six months um, are kind of the result—not the direct result, but the, the the kind of interaction with the wider community and some of the things we've been doing. And I think that wrap, wraps it up. And I'll hand it over to DJ Spock, who will talk about the music program in two of the three events. Yes. Hi. So in the first um, of the three events we had, uh, there was music program, but I think it was only one or two concerts. And when it came to um, Gulasch Programmiernacht, it was cancelled. When I heard about it, then I thought, um, yeah, there, there must be uh, another event uh, instead of that. And then, then I tried to organize another DVOC. It was way too late for um, for a content like talks or workshop or something like this. So I thought um, I will make musical content only. So we had no talks, we had no workshops, uh, we had only music and audio art. But um, during uh, the preparation for this event, um, something really great happened, um, and there were people. There were just things happening. So people were creating uh, self-organized sessions were creating there some uh, kind of talks, some kind of workshops. So that was not only music on this event. We have also a lot of other things going on. Um, we streamed non-stop from Wednesday afternoon till a Sunday evening, so we had no breaks. It was a non-stop live stream, like 90% of the content was really live. We have some um, stuff that was pre-recorded, but most of the things were live. And we have done it in cooperation with Radio Darmstadt and uh, C-Radar. C-Radar is a show, it's a CCC radio show, which I can really recommend. <laughs> it's um, from Chaos Darmstadt. Um, and uh, C-Radar and Radio Darmstadt supported us with their infrastructure. But I will talk about the technical features later. Um, and we also have some uh, supporters for the content from Sphere Radio. Sphere Radio is from uh, Leipzig. This is an online radio. Also, All FM is also an online radio. It's from Hamburg. And they um, contributed also content to our music and audio art stream. Um, and then let's talk about the technology. Um, so uh, how was it broadcasted? Uh, we broadcasted the audio via Icecast, so that was no video, it was only audio. And we used Icecast for the internet broadcasting. The uh, Radio Darmstadt has, of course, their own infrastructure for broadcasting the stuff over uh, FM and also DAB+. Plus. So um, I'm not sure if there already have been a uh, CCC event that was almost completely completely broadcasted <laughs> via a um sorry I have, I have heard something, I, I guess. Um, so that uh, that was also broadcasted via FM and via DRB+. Um, what uh, technology we, will, would, uh, we used for the organization for the preparation? So C-File was um, it's a, really, a really nice tool that we really liked for exchanging data. 
for exchanging files. This is also a non-centralized and open source tool. That's um, yeah, what why we use it. We didn't use any like I don't know WeTransfer or uh, Google Drive or stuff like this. And if it comes to music, we uh, have been using a mix, a tractor, and a but uh, but <laughs> it doesn't uh, mean what you think. It's just a shortcut for uh, broadcast using this tool. Um, and this is a tool that can stream stuff to an Icecast server. Uh, and Mix and Tractor are actually DJ software. Mix, by the way, is also an open source uh, free software for mixing. And I also can really recommend it. At, at the beginnings, like, I don't know, two or three years ago, it was really not a good software. Um, it, you could actually not uh, be DJing with that. But right now, it's really, really great. And it can directly stream to an Icecast server. And uh, Tractor, which actually is a commercial software, um, and it's like the state of the art software if it comes to digital mixing to digital DJing. Um, I think it's really nice that the only possibility that they have in their program to stream to an audio server is to stream to an open source Icecast. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm mentioning this. Um, and I also would like to mention that it was a really great thing that I uh, started to doing this uh, musical stuff and uh, so much other uh, things uh, happened also without any... Uh, um, interaction from me and almost all of the people also who are right now here in this talk uh, were supporting um, this um, this event. It was really nice. And we also had some music and the push to talk event by actually using the same technology. Uh, yeah, and I could talk um, hours about this. But I think that was enough overview. Thank you very much, DJ Spock, Benjamin, STB, for this rundown of the organizational technical uh, details and the music stream. So let's try to pull this all together and look at how it worked out. First, uh, content. I previously mentioned that the hidden service could rely on recycled submissions from Easter Hack, but by the time it came to push to talk, uh, we were ready to experiment some more to use the advantages of, of this uh, remote feature. And we had our own CFP asking specifically for remote interactive contents. And even though perhaps it didn't turn out perfect technologically, um, it did allow us to have something like a multi-site transcontinental live transmission um, on, on uh, broadcast on live stream. That's one of the examples. Another example was that uh, we had an art workshop that uh, directly was engaging the remote audience and it interacting via um, various social media in, in real time. Um, also, we've, we've heard this multiple times, but it probably cannot be stressed enough that DVOC is really uh, an event where everyone is an, an active contributor. Um, people are not just an, an audience. It's, it's, it's a real community event, small events, but definitely uh, very much community driven. So in that sense, DVOC is not for tourists, which simply means that it attracts a certain type of, of crowd that is really eager to contribute themselves. Um, so an amazing level of self-organization has emerged. We've, we've heard this before. Really a lot of self-organized sessions happened and kept happening. Um, and various degrees of self-organization of the participants with contributed uh, matrix channels, QA APEDs, and so on. We've, we've heard all this. Um, and it's also a format that is particular, that turned out to be particularly suitable for communities um, that are distributed to start with. Um, one of the examples is the Autismus Nerd Talk with people distributed uh, all over, um, and another traditionally distributed uh, network um, are the Hexen. Please do ask us more about these examples uh, in the Q&A. We have data. Um, also, anecdotal evidence here, I, I do want to mention this. Um, we felt that uh, this kind of event attracted a quite diverse and international crowd, and that was also a very welcome side effect. So trying to summarize all this, um, let me say that DVOX are community events that can bring together people, 
that can bring together communities that uh, can spawn new and improbable friendships. And I have to say that personally, this is really something that uh, has, has kept me afloat through this year. Uh, Divos can be a lot of fun to organize and attend. Uh, so at this point in time, a very, very big thank you to all of you who, who made this happen. But also, um, Divox are not a substitute. It's just not the same as real life events. Uh, and we all know that. Um, and it means that when you're preparing a DVOC uh, to happen, uh, you have to invest some energy to manage expectations. Um, people's, people shouldn't be exact, uh, expecting um, the same, exactly the same experience that they would have uh, in um, physical events. Um, also, let's not kid ourselves here. Um, COVID is not done with us. So we are not done with DVOC. Uh, and that is the, well, more hidden and darker meaning also of DVOC forever. Uh, DVOC is here to stay for, for a while. So let's look at the details of how, of how that can happen. What um, can we offer? What can you offer for the future of DVOC? First of all, if you're new to this, uh, we invite you to catch up on previous DVOCs. Uh, you will find the individual events on the uh, previously mentioned wiki pages that are listed here. And as always with Chaos events, you'll find the recorded talks of past events either in the temporary relive or uh, properly published in the archive on media CCCDE with uh, the individual links um, to the talks of the events given below. Secondly, uh, you can join the community if you haven't already done so. Uh, on the one hand, by looking if there are still any self-organized sessions going on that you would like to uh, become part of, you can join the community on IRC, on Matrix, or connect on social media via Mastodon or Twitter. And then finally, thirdly, um, if you want to contribute yourself, if you want to organize a future DVOC or adopt DVOC elements into your own event, we have compiled resources on how to DVOC, um, again, in a dedicated wiki page that you see listed here. And you're very welcome to get in touch with us, um, with the DVOC team at the email address uh, listed here. So at this point, before we move on the Q to the Q&A and invite you to an interactive workshop right after this, uh, STB is going to be, give us a sneak preview for 2021. <laughs> that sounds like uh, we have prepared something already. Um, no, we haven't really prepared anything yet, but... Um, as we all were preparing for this current event, the RC3, um, we all had hopes that uh, the the whole coronavirus virus situation would would somehow magically be less severe than it turned out to be this winter. And at this point, it's pretty clear that at least in Germany, we won't have any live in-person events at least until the summer. Um, so um, I speak for the people who are here right now, but I think a couple more as well. Um, we really think that over Easter, we do want to do something again, um, whatever the name might be. Um, and I think we'll just continue the tradition of having a DVOC at Easter, um, or that will be the beginning of the tradition, so to speak. Um, so if you are if you don't know what you want to do over Easter because you're stuck at home because of restrictions, um, Think about whether you want to join DVOC, help organize it, uh, contribute some interesting content, organize a cool workshop, or whatever strikes your fancy, really, because it continues to be also an experimental format. Um, we're not really restricted in many ways, and we can do pretty much whatever you want. So if you have a cool idea that you think might be worth trying, Please get in touch, uh, join us, and uh, then we'll see what we can do in a couple months' time.
So and I, I don't know. Uh, I, I can. So the 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 final thing really is the Q and A. We we uh, finished our time slot, uh, so there's unfortunately no time for the Q and A right now here on the stream. But if you go to the link uh, that is on the slide right now, so in RC World, uh, uh, if you log on to the rc3.world uh, and look, search, use the search uh, function to search for DVOC, there's a DVOC Forever workshop, uh, which is a big blue button. And we'll be joining that big blue button right after this talk in a minute or two. And then we look forward to uh, answering your questions, hear your suggestions, or whatever you might want to say to us or come and join us right away. So thank you very much to the really interesting insight of DVOC. And uh, I think we should all go now to the workshop and ask the questions or uh, just, um, you know, help to keep this going on. And uh, I think it can be a really interesting alternative for staying alone at home next year. Absolutely. Absolutely.